Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So welcome everyone. We are very fortunate today to have uh, His Holiness Ramay Swami Maharaj amongst us. So, <coughs> Maharaj, uh, we uh, we have received Maharaj's association before as well. As you know, uh, he came to our JOC program a few months ago. Um, so we have we all know that how wonderful Kirtan Maharaj is, and uh, he gives. Uh, very interesting lectures, sometimes very short, but still, in those short lectures as well, he covers all the important points and uh, yeah, covers the complex subject matter very easily for all of us to understand. So Maharaj, as you know, uh, that Maharaj is a disciple of uh, His Divine Grace, uh, Srila Prabhupada. And um, in 1971, Maharaj actually received uh, a Back to God the magazine from his friend. And by just reading Back to God the magazine, Maharaj got attracted towards Krishna consciousness. And he started associating with uh, devotees. And because of that, then uh, in, uh, very soon actually he uh, moved into temple. And in 1973, Maharaj actually took initiation from Srila Prabhupada. In 1982, he took sannyas. And uh, he has been for last, as you can see, 1970 when he got introduced. So almost like 48 years he has been serving Srila Prabhupada's mission in various capacities. So in the beginning Maharaj was uh, doing books distribution through a bus party. So he would have bus full of books and then he would go uh, mainly in Australia Maharaj and here. and here as well. So Maharaj has distributed lots of books in uh, New Zealand and Australia. Maharaj actually has also done a lot of administrative uh, services in in uh, ISKCON. He has been temple president for Auckland Temple, then Adelaide Temple, Sydney Temple, Melbourne Temple. Then he has been um, uh, done other services like the National Secretary, Regional Secretary. And for last many years he has been a GBC. So Governing Body Commission is the highest authority in ISKCON and he has been serving. He has actually served twice as chairman as well for this uh, GBC. Uh, currently, he is GBC for Australia, New Zealand, and few other countries. Well. Indonesia. Indonesia. And uh, Southern America. And uh, which one? America. America. So, uh, today he is going to actually speak on a very wonderful topic, and I am sure that it is going to be useful and helpful for all of us. The topic is how to remain steady in Krishna consciousness. So, how to remain steady in Krishna consciousness. So let's welcome Maharaj with loudly chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and then I'll hand over to Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome Maharaj. Thank you.
Prabhupada ki jai, jai, jai Shri Krishna Bhagavan ki jai. jai, Hare Krishna everyone, thank you for uh, doing the kirtan. Now uh, um, I'm Brish Maharaj Prabhu, wanted to, uh, me to speak a little bit about how to remain steady on the, the path of the Krishna consciousness. So I think that uh, Lord Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita answers this question very nicely. There are many prescribed methods how to remain steady. But there is one, a simple method, which is actually the general principle for all other methods. And I'll read it from Bhagavad Gita in the, in the second chapter. Dishaya vinivartan te nirahara dehina rasavra jamra sopyasya param drishtva nivartate. Though uh, the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense object remains, but ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in the consciousness. And Prabhupada, he says, unless one is transcendently situated, it is not possible to cease from sense enjoyment. The process of restricting a restriction from sense enjoyment by rules and regulations is something like restricting a diseased person from certain type of eatables. The patient, however, neither likes such restrictions nor loses his taste uh, for eatables. Similarly, sense restriction by some spiritual process like Astanga Yoga in the matter of Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, uh, it's, uh, 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 Dhyana, etc., is recommended for less intelligent persons who have no better knowledge. But one who has tasted the beauty of the Supreme Lord Krishna in the course of his advancement in Krishna consciousness has no longer, uh, no longer has a taste for the dead material things. Therefore, restrictions are there for the less intelligent neophytes in the spiritual advancement of life. But such restrictions are only good until one actually has a taste for Krishna consciousness. When one is actually Krishna conscious, he automatically loses his taste for the pale things. So, the formula is given here, the process is given here, param drishtva, vishayi, the vishaya, vishaya means the uh, objects for the sense enjoyment, and the vishayi, of course, means the senses. So all of us are, are born in the world, uh, who get a particular type of body. We now have the human body, but of course, uh, uh, so many living entities have uh, other types of bodies, other species of life, the bird and the, and the, uh, the insect and the dog and the cat and the fish, and so many different species all have their senses, and, uh, and, uh, but actually it is the soul within that body that is given the life to the body. Uh, but the, the soul has forgotten his position of being soul. He is thinking, now I am a fish, now I am a dog, now I am a cat, now I am a tree. So many, I am thinking. I'm, I, he is not thinking I am the soul. That is the problem, misidentification. That is the, what's called the illusion and the ignorance. So uh, with the, that ignorance and the illusion, one thinks fish, uh, uh, the whatever, so there's vishayi, there's certain senses, the bee has the eyes also, has the smell and everything. With those senses, then there are objects that they try to enjoy. And this is all governed uh, under the prakriti, the material nature, under the modes, uh, sattva guna, uh, rajaguna, tamaguna, the different species are, are, are more in the you know, tamaguna, and some are more, have some raja, some have a little bit even the, the sattva. So, They'll, they'll have their objects. The bee has the objects. Uh, it's attracted to the, the flower, it's attracted to the pollen. Uh, so that is their arrangement. It's not attracted so much to the uh, other things, but it's attracted to those things. Why is like that? Because this is arrangement ultimately under the Paramatma, Upadashta Numantacha, Bata Bhuktama, Paramatmiti Chapita Dei Smin Pushapara. He is the arranger. He is the overseer. He knows all. He knows what the desires were. He knows what the activities, and therefore he gives the what is the uh, uh, prescribed the future for that type of activity. So then, once someone has to go to the body of, of the bee, or the body of the dog, or the body of the cat. 
So that body has particular objects that it will be very attracted. The pig has the body of the hog like certain things. It will be attracted. Uh, maybe other uh, uh, species is not attracted in the same way. So each one has its thing. And then one comes to the human. The human has also vishayi, has the senses. And we enjoy, we like to see things with the eyes and, and smell things and hear things and taste things and touch things. Uh, and our mind is working also, considered another sense, the more subtle sense. So the mind is working full of ideas. And we're tr and now, because of misidentification, then we're, we're, we're thinking, I, I'm not the soul, I am the body with these, I have these eyes, and <coughs> I have all these senses. Let me go to the object and let me enjoy. But this is called the lower taste, because everything is temporary. Uh, we, we cannot enjoy infinitely by the senses. Uh, you know, if I were just to touch something, oh, I get the pleasure, or oh, that feels very good. But if I continuously touch, after just a short time, it'll be a very disgusting thing. <laughs> Who wants to just completely use it? It's limited. It's limited pleasure from the touching. I see something, oh, that thing is so beautiful, or I look at thing, that thing all the time. You think after a few hours it'll still be beautiful? You'll be very tired of it. <laughs> like, you like to smell. This flower is a very, very wonderful smell. Just smell it all the time. Like. No, you can't. But after a while it becomes stale because it's limited. So everything is limited. And that is the frustration of the soul. The soul inside is in ignorance, but it's still innate. It still wants to enjoy. And that's the nature. And under my Vyasa, the nature of the soul, it wants to enjoy. But it's enjoying to the wrong things, to the limited things. So therefore the frustration, and, uh, the ignorance, the illusion, the bewilderment, uh, it doesn't know. <laughs> All it knows is what it's grown up, uh, and especially in the human form. You know, we grow up in a certain place, we have certain family, uh, we have certain friends, we go to certain school, we go to work in a certain way. All these things uh, are building up our, uh, our conception of who we are and what we're supposed to do. And, and we have to conform to so many things, and that is uh, all the, uh, how you are brought up in your life. But as I was saying in, in the temple in Christchurch, when we were uh, reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, and uh, where Krishna, or Narad Muni actually, Narad Muni was explaining to Yudhisthira Maharaj, these things, don't be uh, in illusion about these things. Don't uh, get, uh, build up too much attachment to these, because you'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed. Now, the, the way the, the living entities compensate for the disappointment, they try to look for newer and newer things. All right, I can't, look, like, I can't eat that. Oh, I love gulab jams. All right, eat gulab jams every day. <laughs> After one day, you're the no more gulab jams. <laughs> you, like, you like the gulab jams? Eat all the time gulab jams. Every day, every week, gulab jams, just gulab jams. You'll be very sick of the gulab jams. So therefore, to compensate that the limited pleasure, then you look for the different, oh, let me have the variety, the variety will satisfy, I'll be very satisfied, but then variety, you keep looking, 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 it satisfies you temporarily, and then you have to move, so this is continuous moving, you get tired, I'm tired of moving to one thing to the other, I just want one thing, then you go to the one thing, I'm tired of one thing, then I have to move again, so, uh, so this is continuous, and, and, and because we get attached to this thing, go from one life to the other. And if we build up attachment, uh, just like the pig, we, now, now if we like to eat anything and everything, for example, we make no discrimination. A human being is not meant for no discrimination. A human being is meant for discrimination. But we eat anything. Uh, we eat, uh, uh, just like uh, I was in uh, Melbourne, there was uh, one Bhakti Bhikshu program I went, and the leader of the program, he said that we have many new people coming, uh, but uh, one man was very enthusiastic and he liked the chanting, he liked everything and we studied Bhagavad Gita and everything, but he said quite frankly, he admitted, I'm very uh, attached to the meat eating. Meaning I'm very addicted. I'm very addicted to that thing. I mean, because all, my, all my life, I cannot give it up. But, uh, 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 but the leader was very, uh, 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 in, you know, he thought this is an incredible thing because especially someone from the India, and there's no shortage of the variety of the food stuff. Now, when I was first becoming devotee, and even before I was devotee, I became vegetarian. But in the Western country, there was not much variety for the vegetarian. 
my friends didn't used to invite me any any more to their their their, their their house because they didn't know what to make. <laughs> what we're going to feed him? He's a vegetarian. Some carrot, some lettuce. <laughs> so after you know, so I used to get the invitation, but after a while, I know I didn't get any more invitations. <laughs> they didn't know what to do, so they'd make some excuse or something. So, so, but in India, someone from India, why he has to be addicted to the meeting? So much variety of the food and such nice thing. But he wants to be addicted. That means he wants to be addicted. It's not out of necessity he has to be addicted. He's built up in his mind this addiction. It's an artificial thing. Artificial. But I cannot give up the meat. So that is a very unfortunate situation. So how to break it? So Prabhupada actually explains it. It's very difficult. Restricting. Trying to just say, don't do it. Don't do that thing. If you say like that, you're all right. Just like someone addicted to the cigarette smoking. I remember I, I go to Indonesia once, the body he said, before I was devotee, I used to smoke so addicted to the cigarette smoking. So two packets every day, had to. Cigarette smoking, cigarette smoking, addicted. I, I tried, I knew it was bad. So I tried myself to give up. Sometimes I would give up, sometimes one month, two months, then again smoking. Sometimes only one week and again smoking. So oh, many years I tried, I could, couldn't give it up. Addicted, but then I met the devotee. The devotee said, "You start chanting. You especially do this japa chanting. Every time you get urged to smoke, just do Hare Krishna mantra. I, I want to smoke cigarette. I'm good. Just Hare Krishna." He said, "Actually, I tried. I said I followed that, and I said every time I got urged, I did one round on the beats, on the japa beats, and so that that cured me. It was an incredible thing. I couldn't believe. I tried everything, other things." I just did like that. Every time I had the urge, a strong urge, pushing on me, very incredible pushing, I had to have. I said, no, I'll hurry. And then since that time, he said, I never smoked since I started the chanting. So you can restrict, don't take this, don't do that, don't do the other thing, but unless you have something better, then this is the point that is made here by Lord Krishna, Paramdrish brother. You get the higher thing, then very easily you give up the lower thing. If you don't know other, anything else, you only have that thing, then how you can give it up? You can't give it up. Impossible, because we become addicted to it. So just like if you have, <clears throat> say you have old car, very old car, and it always breaking, you have to pull, you have to call someone to fix it, it's giving so much trouble, but you don't have other thing. So you're very attached. If someone wants to take it away, no, no, I don't have any other one, that is my... But if someone comes and says, oh, I'll give you much better car, <laughs> immediately you'll give up the other one. But if you didn't have the better car, you have to have this one. This is the only one you have. You can't give it up. You have to have it. Otherwise, how you go everywhere? You have to have this one. But someone who offers, now take the new car, this is the old one, take the new car. So then very easily, so this is the secret, very simple formula, very uh, easy thing, uh, and quite appropriately we have the picture of the Lord Chaitanya, the painting of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we see in the back, he's chanting and dancing. This was the process very much uh, uh, um, promoted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This chanting and dancing, this is the higher taste, actually, the higher taste. The higher taste, one has to absorb themselves. Uh, now, of course, here Prabhupada also mentions that for those who are less intelligent neophytes in the spiritual advancements of life, sometimes there has to be also restrictions. We are in that situation. We are the beginners. And actually, uh, we are intelligent in one sense. We've taken up Krishna consciousness, but we're still a little, a little less intelligent because we still have some, we're still keeping some attachment. So as long as we're keeping, they are dragging us. Uh, we, we, we've, you know, even we've got the height and we haven't fully absorbed ourselves in the higher thing. And, and we're uh, 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 keeping our attachments in the world. Just like we in the, in the early day, we used to do one play to illustrate the point of the philosophy of attachment. We used to do one man, he had so many rocks and he would come on the stage and he had many rocks and we had the rocks, we had the name on the rocks, the house rock, 
the car rock, the family rock, the work, the work rock. So many rocks he had, and he was holding them, and they were very heavy. And uh, but then he saw on the other side of the river, and we used to just have one sari, and that was the river. <laughs> And so on the other side of the river, the devotees were chanting and dancing in ecstasy. They were very much in the ecstasy. And so the devotees said, hey, come over here and join us. And, uh, and they said, what are you doing? We're chanting and dancing. Oh, it looks like you're having and enjoying so much. Oh, yes, it's so, it's so nice. It's so much enjoying we're doing just by this chanting and we're dancing. And so come and join us. Yes, yes, oh, it looks good. I will come. But then when he came to go across the rocks, he couldn't go on the river because he had too many rocks. So the devotee said, don't, 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 you will drown. just throw your rocks and just come. Just swim, but you can't swim with the rock. You have to throw the rock. Then you'll swim. Said, oh, oh, okay, but oh, no, no, I, I, but these rocks, I need these rocks. <laughs> these rocks I've had so, all my life, these rocks, and they are always with me. So I can't throw them. But how are you going to come here if you don't throw Oh, All right, I'll throw maybe one or two rocks. I'll throw this one, that one. So then he threw one or two, but then still he couldn't. So the devotee said, no, you have to throw all your rocks. Then you can swim freely. If you're trying to carry even one or two, with one hand it will be very difficult. <laughs> so throw all and with three, very easily you'll come. So he was protesting, and but in the end he, all right, I'll throw all of And very easily he came and he was joining. So we used to do the, a little uh, uh, drama like that, just to illustrate the point, that actually chanting is very good, but the, the rocks are dragging you. The rocks are dragging. So restrictions are there. Of course, if the one is said to give up, uh, we're putting, you're putting the restrictions, uh, uh, but un unless you come to the higher level, then the restrictions are not good. The restrictions are only good if you come to the healthy. Just like the doctor may give the prescription, you take this medicine. But if the medicine is not making you healthy, what is the use of the medicine? But sometimes you have to go back for the and report to the doctor, and sometimes you'll ask, uh, is, uh, is it make any progress? You're taking the medicine? Oh no, I don't find, actually I'm getting worse with the medicine. <laughs> so he has to make adjustment. I've, I've experienced myself that, oh, oh, I have to make adjustment here. Maybe I prescribe too much this thing, or maybe I'll, I'll give other things. So uh, it only, the medicine is only good, or the restriction is only good if you can come to the higher level. So this is the, uh, the message here given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We may be restricted, but the restriction themselves, uh, just like, and Prabhupada says, just like in the Astanga Yoga, there's many Yama, Niyama, Asana, many things that one has to follow, but unless one comes to the higher level, then this, these things will not stand. Uh, so, the secret now, uh, um, I was reading, uh, uh, giving the, uh, the lecture in the in Christchurch Temple, and I was telling the different uh, Leela of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came specifically to taste Radha's love uh, uh, for Krishna. Indeed, when Narad Muni, one time he visited uh, Krishna in the Dwarka of the spiritual world, and, uh, he, and he said that I'm worried for the people of the Kali Yuga, that they are becoming, they will be very materialistic and how they'll be liberated, they will just be more entangled in illusion and so um, uh, Krishna said, I've just been talking with Rukmini and uh, she was telling that I was asking about, the, because when I came, uh, she was crying and I said, why are you crying? Because I, you were away for some time and I'm crying in separation and I have so much love. And I said, oh, this love, you have so much love for me. And she said that actually if you want to know who has the most love for you, is Srimati Radharani. She's, when you go away, she's always crying. Always crying, but that crying is actually intensifying her love for, for Krishna. It's not like crying just uh, and out of anger or, or something. It's crying with more intensity. The separation, the vipralamba, it's called technically, samboga and vipralamba. Vipralamba, which is the, samboga means the uh, union. The union is enhanced by the uh, vipra, the, the separation. When they're, they're separated, and then they come together, and the union is even more. But even the separation is very intent because they can't stop you. You're always thinking about that, pining for that person. So on that level, it's very... So Rukmini said that Radha is in the top mode. So I want to taste that. 
Krishna said, I, I, I know all things, but I have yet to taste the actual love my devotees have for me. I want to I want to taste it myself. So I said, in, and I've decided that in the future I'll come in a form just to taste that thing. Uh, I'll come in the form of myself and with Radha also combined thing. And at that time he manifested the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Narad Muni, when he saw that form, was so beautiful, Lord Chaitanya, so beautiful, he fainted. He was so, he fainted in the unconsciousness and he came to, back to the consciousness and he said that, and then Krishna again came to his form of Krishna and he said, now in the future I will come. Now you tell everyone that uh, I'm coming and I'm tasting the love that Radha has for me. And also, that is my primary, but also I want to give this love. And I want to give this love in the form of the chanting. It's because in the chanting, everything is there. Krishna is there. Rama is there, the, the pleasure partner, the, the supreme strength and pleasure, and, and Hari, Arada, Arada, Hari, uh, Hara, uh, come, is, uh, the uh, vocative is Hare, Hare refers to Radha. So everything is there in the chanting. So in that chanting, all the love is there, and I want to give it to everyone. And this is the way the people of the Kali Yuga, who will be very fallen, will come to the topmost position. They'll come from the lowest position to the topmost position. And they're very, very, therefore, Lord Chaitanya is considered to be very merciful. The most <coughs> munificent and magnanimous incarnation. In the time of Krishna, he said, Savaraman Parita, you surrender unto me. Surrender unto me, I will protect you from all the sinful reactions. But just surrender first, then I will protect you. Uh, but not everyone was surrendering. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya, especially in Kali Yuga, they are not surrendering. So Lord Chaitanya said, it doesn't matter you surrender or you don't surrender, just do this chanting and then you will be liberated. So therefore, Krishna made conditions, Lord Chaitanya doesn't make any condition. It doesn't matter if one surrenders, whatever his situation, then he can come. Just do this chanting. So this was his mission. I was reading this, the Leela when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> visited, he went on tour, he, 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 he took the sannyas. <laughs> we have one requirement that the, all the phones have to go on the silent. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, now, when Lord Chaitanya Nimai Pandit, he was like a scholar uh, in, in Nabadweep, and he grew up. He had his own, own tola school and everything. Uh, but then, when he uh, met Ishwara Puri, he took initiation. He took a turn from. Uh, the, the, the scholastic and academic school type of uh, presentation, and he, he started to experience great ecstasy and love of God. And in his school, he would teach about Krishna, and he would teach about Radha, and and actually he was chanting. He started to chant Gopi, Gopi, Gopi one time, and, uh, and saying that uh, uh, the students said, "Why are you chanting Gopi? Well, Gopi is uh, even more higher." So the students were complaining. So Lord Chaitanya said, "Actually." Even my own students come. Better I go out from this situation and I let me take the sannyas order of life. Because if I take the, the, uh, wear the saffron cloth, naturally the people, especially India, even today, if one is wearing the saffron cloth, they're getting the respect. So now I'm not in getting the respect because I'm just a grihasta. I'm just like everybody else. Uh, so, but but to that, so I, not that I want the respect. But to spread, to, to give the teachings, people have to respect what I'm saying. So automatically, uh, as the sannyasi, and that's why he took, now he took, so someone asked me this question the other day, why did Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take sannyas from Amayavadi sannyasi? He took from Keshav Bharati. Now, uh, Keshav Bharati, externally, uh, he was in the line of Sankara. Uh, but at that time, this mainly the sannyasis were in the line of the sankara. Uh, the Vaishnavas, they didn't go to the sun. They took Babaji. Babaji. Babaji stage. Babaji stage means total isolation, just uh, uh, doing the chanting, wearing the white. Babaji dress means wearing the white. So people in general, they, they, when someone wears the white, they, they don't know it's Babaji or what it is. And that, that doesn't get so much respect. Uh, but the saffron, and mainly the saffron was in the line of Sankara. So Keshav Bharati, actually internally, he was a Vaishnava. But externally, he took in the line of Sankara. 
So Lord Chaitanya approached him. He knew actually he was quite a great exalted devotee, but he also took in that line. And even at the initiation, Keshav Bharati, his uh, sannyas guru, said, "Well, which mantra you want?" So actually, Lord Chaitanya told him the mantra. <laughs> so actually, Lord Chaitanya initiated him, <laughs> and then he gave the mantra back. He gave the sannyas mantra. Back. So, uh, um, so that is the explanation. So then he left the home. Of course, Sachimana, his mother, was very upset. She's not to have a boy there in Nimai. But uh, uh, as explained by the acharyas. Uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya had his family there, but if he wanted to expand his family to the whole world. So he left his smaller family to make the bigger family of spreading the Krishna consciousness. And everyone would be his family. So he left the home and uh, at his mother's request, he lived not so far away in this uh, Jagannath Puri. And after some time at Jagannath Puri, then he decided to go and travel, visit all the holy places. And wherever he went, he, would, uh, he was just walking. Walking and, and as he was walking, chanting, chanting, and sometimes dancing, and and when he visited the temple, he would go inside and see the deity inside. He would uh, be always chanting. Everyone was very amazed. He, he went all the way. He went to the South India, and I was telling the story of uh, how he visited one uh, uh, temple there of Korma. There's a famous temple in India, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, Kor Korma. There. There's very not so many Korma temples. Korma incarnation is the form of the Lord in uh, the, the tortoise form. Very famous Leela. Uh, one time when the Asuras and the Devas were churning the ocean of milk, they used the Mount Meru to, as the churning uh, 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 pivot. Uh, and they used Vasuki as the, the rope. And they wanted to get the elixir from the ocean of the milk, get the nectar to live eternally. So, uh, but that mountain was sinking. And it was going in the bottom, so they couldn't turn it anymore. So then Lord, uh, they prayed to the Lord, came as Korma, he went underneath, and it went. the mountain was on his back, so that then Lord Ajit went on the top to hold it steady, and then they were able to turn, and all sorts of things came from the ocean, and the, uh, the elixir of immortality also came, the nectar. So Lord Korma came for that purpose. And there's not so, but there's not so many Korma temples. That is a famous one. Lord Chaitanya visited. I had the fortune of visiting uh, once or twice there, very beautiful temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so Lord Chaitanya, when he saw Korma Didi and Lakshmi Devi is also there, and uh, um, he, he, he was fainted in, in ecstasy just to see Lord Korma. And then when he came to the con consciousness, he was just chanting and dancing. And chanting and dancing. And so, so many people were just amazed. The priest of the temple was amazed to see, just to see him. He was a very extraordinary personality, very beautiful, effulgent. Just a fulgent personality. To be in his presence was like nothing that, that that priest had ever experienced. And then so many people came that they saw him. And, and then uh, those people told the other people. So big crowds would come to be with Lord Chaitanya, chanting and dancing. And so the priest gave him so many offerings of the prasadam and offerings of the temple. And then he, when he went outside, one there was one Brahmana. His name was Korma, also, after the Didi Korma. His name was Korma. He was a, a, a Vedic Brahmana. He invited uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya to his home. And so, uh, well, Lord Chaitanya, when he when he arrived at the home, he, the, he, he and his family were so much in ecstasy, uh, they could see he was such an exalted personality that they washed his feet as the tradition. Because in, in those days, everyone uh, walking, when you go on the parakram, you just go the bare feet. So, Lord Chaitanya, so generally when one... Uh, in, in those days, when you, when someone uh, comes to your home, like I said, you wash the feet because they've been walking uh, with the bare feet. You wash the feet, and that uh, Korma, he washed the feet and he sprinkled on the head of that family his head, and also he drank the water because he knew this is not ordinary water. This has touched the lotus feet of a very exalted personality. So he's had that culture, he had that understanding, he had that realization, uh, the exalted person. So then he sat him down and he gave him the nice prasad and everything like that. And he was so uh, 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 attracted to Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya was going to leave, he said, oh, let me come with you. I want to travel with you. Please allow me to travel with you. I've been in the family life so long. I think that now it's time for me to give up the family life and then just travel with you and do all, just do always this chanting and the dancing. 
Please allow me to go. So Lord Chaitanya actually, he replied, he said, no, don't speak like that. There's no need to give up the family life. One actually, uh, especially in this age, and it's not at all recommended. And actually, it's recommended that one just do this chanting, and to do this chanting, you can do anywhere. And, and, and mainly the people will be in the family life. So if everyone to give up the family life is not a good thing. The prematurely it is, you are, you are asking. Prematurely. Best do you stay in the family and you do this chanting and your whole family can do this chanting and you, you know, and, then, and, and, and invite your friends to come and do the chanting. And in this way, your whole place will become like the vicar to the spiritual. So, Korma uh, uh, heard him and yes, yes, thank you, but he still, just please, and he tried to follow him. No, no, you go back. So Korma, uh, he agreed and uh, uh, he went back home. But then shortly after, there was another Brahmana who heard about Lord Chaitanya and uh, he came there to meet Lord Chaitanya. And he was another Brahmana, his name was Vasudeva. Vasudeva. Now this Vasudeva, uh, for some reason, uh, he had contracted uh, contra uh, contracted uh, leprosy. Leprosy in those days, and still in India, it's quite it's uh, quite common. Uh, I mean, in those days, it was quite common to get the leprosy. And uh, you know, some many of you from India have probably seen the person with the leprosy. Even a young man or young uh, uh, woman can look very old. Uh, because of uh, the, the skin and everything and the disease, some can be very severe. You can be very deformed even. You can lose your fingers, uh, your toes, everything. So many things can happen. Anyway, so this Brahmana had the leprosy and he didn't look, he looked very ugly because of the leprosy. And not only that, but the, he had the sores from the leprosy all over his body and his body was not smelling <laughs> very nicely. Even he had some worms that were going in the sores. But he was so exalted, he he didn't, he didn't want to cause any disturbance. Sometimes the worms were falling out. He took the worm and put them back. <laughs> he didn't want to cause discomfort to any living creature. This is his thinking. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, so it was like that. But he wanted to meet Lord Chaitanya. But when he came there, Lord Chaitanya had just left. So he was very sad, oh, I heard about such a golden person, he was here in your home. Yeah, uh, but now he has left, he was very, very sad. But all of a sudden, Lord Chaitanya came there. Now, as I said, this Vasudev, he had uh, leprosy, so no one would like to come near him. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately came there and he embraced him. He embraced him immediately. So the Vasudev was very shocked, oh, don't be, you know, I'm, my body has got the sores. Maybe you'll catch also this leprosy by brain. But Lord Chaitanya said, because Lord Chaitanya knew actually he is an exalted person. So he had no hesitation. He embraced it. But not only that, when he embraced it, immediately his leprosy was gone. Just like that. Immediately. So the, the Brahmana, Vasudev, he was in shock. And not only that, but he looked very beautiful. Before he was very smelling, and then all of a sudden his body had a great fragrance. So he was crying. He was crying that this happened, and he fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya, and, 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 and crying, he embraced him, and he embraced the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. He said, that, who am I? Actually, he, he recited one prayer that was, that was uh, 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 um, uh, by uh, Sudama Brahmana. So Sudama Brahmana was from Krishna's time. He went to the same school as Krishna, Sandipani Muni Ashram, and he was there, and, but he was a poor Brahmana, his wife asked him, maybe go to see Krishna and Dwarka, and maybe Krishna will help us. <coughs> and so he went there, and, uh, and then he, when he went there to Dwarka, Krishna embraced him as his old friend. And then he said, who am I? I'm just a, a, a poor Brahmana of the world, and you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, who is everywhere, he is all-knowing, he has all, all power, all strength, and yet this one is embracing me. Who am I for, to get this embrace? So Sudama Brahmana, he said that to Krishna. And this uh, Vasudev Brahmana, he said the same thing. He repeated what Sudama said to Lord Chaitanya. Who am I? So obviously he was a little bit uh, educated and learned. He knew the Shastras, everything like that. But uh, Lord Chaitanya uh, uh, understood he is not ordinary Brahman. He is actually a very exalted person. And he embraced him. So he said, I have told Korma that just stay at home 
and do this chanting and try to uh, bring other people to this chanting also. And so I, I also request you to do the same thing. Do the same thing. You always do this chanting and you will always be in the, you will always experience great ecstasy by doing this chanting. You always do this chanting and try to tell your friends also do this chanting. Uh, so Prabhupada, he was writing in the purport, he said that this only is the mission of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. This, this only is the mission. That uh, we go everywhere, we ask the people to do this chanting and to, to help you fix on the chanting, we just ask them. Now, first of all, we say, do the chanting. And do, take some association of devotees, take a little bit of prasad. If someone is more serious, then they can study some Bhagavad Gita, some Srimad Bhagavatam. Someone is more serious, more, wants to go rapid on the path, uh, then, all right, we are beginning devotees, we still have attachment, so, and these, some of these attachments are not very good at all, especially this meat eating, this illicit sex, this gambling, uh, uh, this intoxication. So uh, you have to restrict these things, and this will help your chanting. And so Prabhupada was explaining like that. He said, the people of the world, they're so ad addicted to the gambling. They're so addicted to the gambling. Uh, in India, so many ways, here in Wellington, you have the casino and the horse race. I remember one time Prabhupada came to Sydney, and he was staying nearby the temple. And there was a shouting all of a sudden in the evening. There was a big shouting. So many people were shouting in the distance. Prabhupada said, what is that? Oh, Prabhupada, nearby here, there's a, they, are, uh, they had the dog racing. <laughs> so Prabhupada was very, his eyes went big. Oh, they're racing the dogs here? <laughs> he, never, he never heard before. He, from India. In India, the dog is just outside. But uh, uh, in, in, in the West, they had the dog race. Still, they have the dog race. Uh, so the, and that, that dog racing park was nearby and at night time they would get very excited so a prophet said oh they're racing their dog uh, they are racing anything <laughs> some people they are racing the cockroach <laughs> and that's, they are gambling <laughs> they're gambling which will be the more faster cockroach <laughs> yeah, it's true many countries they race the cockroach uh, we read so many times that day. and then they say they have put the money so a very addictive thing you know I know in India in Asia especially, very, very addicted to the gambling. They like the cockfighting, card cockfighting, especially I know Indonesia and Malaysia, these countries, they like to do the cockfighting. It's illegal, they don't, but still they do it, and they put the bed down. Uh, so uh, this gambling, but already, you know, gambling, ga gambling makes you very agitated and very many anxiety in your mind. You don't need that for the spiritual life. That, that's a great, great impediment. So therefore, so don't do the gambling problem. So don't, don't do the meat eating, this cruelty eating the meat is not, not very good, but not good for your body, for your health. And, and it's cruelty, this ahimsa, uh, better to be ahimsa. So for good reason, he said, an intoxication, already intoxicating enough in the world where there's so many illusions and bewilderments, you want to take the intoxication also again on top of that? He said, that, that won't be very helpful at all. An illicit sex life. This is causing so many problems. You, know, you want to just be married in the family like that. Don't go outside. So these restrictions. Well, well, do the, if one is more serious, but in the beginning, just chanting. Get the foot. He didn't start the other way around. Do these restrictions first, and and, 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 and do this other thing, and then do the then then, then do the chanting. Proper was not like that. Proper first do the chanting. Get the taste, get the ecstasy. And because as I said, unless you experience something higher, you will not give up the other thing. You know, you can't say to someone, just don't do the gambling anymore. You have, even in the, in the family, I remember we used to, my uncle used to come, he used to always complain, ah, my son is always addicted to the smoking. And, you know, I, I tell him, don't smoke anymore. Don't do the bad thing. Yes, 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 but he never does. So just saying, don't do, he can't do it, even if he wants to, it's too addictive. Nicotine, actually the smoking is considered one of the most addictive uh, 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 chemicals, and the nicotine in the, in the cigarette is on the, on the level of the very hard drugs, very subtle thing, so difficult to give up. 
but these things are, are, are clogging your mind. So, uh, so, but that only comes later when, when Prabhupada first went to the America. He saw the people. He said, "Just come and do this chanting." Uh, and then later on, he introduced some some uh, uh, hearing. We come to the classes, do the chanting, <laughs> then come to the classes. So gradually, gradually, gradually. But the main thing is the chanting. So uh, he told the Lord Chaitanya told Vasudev, you do the chanting and you try to spread the chanting. Try to spread the chanting. This will be very pleasing to the Supreme Lord. This will be very. This was the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Primary cause. Uh, 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 there are three causes, as, as mentioned by Krishna Kaviraj Goswami. Three reasons for Lord Chaitanya. First, primary is to uh, taste Radha's love for him and, and to spread the chanting. And another one, another reason it's not so much understood is that Lord Chaitanya, uh, Krishna wanted to t taste his own beauty. Normally this would be considered very egotistical for a materialistic person. Oh, they just want to <laughs> absorb themselves in their own beauty. I'm so beautiful, I'm so handsome. As if someone would say, oh, this is a very self-centered person. They just talk about how beautiful they are, something like that. But for Krishna, he wanted to, he knew that the devotees were very attractive. So he wanted to taste his own beauty as well. His own beauty. What are they so attracted? So he wanted to taste it to understand the attraction. Krishna knows everything, but he's always increasing and increasing. There's not static thing. So these three reasons, but they're one of the primary reasons, of course, is spreading the chanting. And so this is the movement of, uh, of the Krishna consciousness movement. The Prabhupada said, this will be very pleasing to Lord Chaitanya, and this will be very pleasing to the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Krishna. So if one uh, chants themselves, experiences the higher taste, and just try, but you, you, of course you cannot force these things. You just say, try to encourage others and come to the program or, or do, try to do some chanting. Or, or whatever way one can engage someone uh, by giving some prashad, uh, let them experience the higher touch. So uh, uh, this is the secret of actually remaining steady. Now going back to the topic of, uh, of discussion tonight, how to remain steady. Uh, the, the unsteadiness, uh, 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 the unsteadiness, nishta, nishta, means uh, steady. Uh, uh, nishta means steady and anishta means unsteady. So uh, at the moment we're, uh, 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 you know, ado, shara, tarasada, sandota, bhajana, kriya, runa, ananda, nibitis, nishta, nishta. Nishta, steadiness comes after Sometimes to be steady. It starts with uh, have some faith in, in the process. Have some faith in Krishna. Uh, bhajana kriya to do do your bhajan to do your chanting. And gradually, gradually you get the taste. You get the taste, and then from the after you get the taste, the experience, the param drishtva, Then comes the nishta. And at the moment we're anishta, and what is the anishta due to anartha? All the the bad habits and all the attachments we have. We, we're devoted, we're, but we're trying to be devoted, and so, but still we have some attachment, and so this is causing the unsteadiness. But nevertheless, it is recommended that one should be uh, very patient, and, and one should be enthusiastic to and, and perseverant, uh, perseverant on the path. Uh, don't give it up so easily. Anyone can give up something. Who is persevering? That is the more credit. <clears throat> it's like one time I had some you know, new devotee. He said, oh, I'm doing so many things wrong. I, I just can't. Uh, what's the use? I, I should just give up. I said, well, anyone can give up. <laughs> not, not, you know, you, you, you go to the university, you do your degree, and then halfway through, oh, it's too hard, I'll give up. Well, anyone can do that. <laughs> yes, and? And? You give up, and then what are you going to do? So, yeah, give up, easy. Easy, but who is staying and trying to finish it? That is the more credit. 
So also in the spiritual life, yes. All right, follow these things. Now I remember one time that one uh, one of the original devotees, he was with Prabhupada in the beginning, and then after some time he went away. But then when Prabhupada was back in India in the early 70s, uh, Prabhupada was staying nearby the Radha Dhammada temple, and then that, that, that disciple came to see Prabhupada. So Prabhupada said, oh, he went away, what was the problem? And uh, he said, Prabhupada, I think there's too many, too many rules, too many rules. I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't follow all these rules and all the. It's too difficult. No, no, Prabhupada, it's not. Because you gave up the chanting, then these things were difficult. But if you always do the chanting, then these things are easy. So your, your, your chanting was decreasing. And then the difficulty increasing. And then the, when the, the difficulty increasing, increasing, and in the, the chanting decreasing, then you give up the chanting. And then when you give up the chanting, then it becomes like mountain thing, big mountain. So, but always do the chanting, and if there's some difficulty, do more chanting. More chanting. Uh, but the quality of the chanting is also very important. The quality. So, of course, that the quality will increase in time. But to try to uh, have sincerity in the chanting, uh, and that will come more and more uh, by being free from the anatta. But the main thing is the chanting. Uh, so steadiness, nishta, comes from uh, uh, getting the taste, and the getting good taste comes from uh, uh, gradually, gradually decreasing, decreasing all the material things. Now that takes time, that takes patience. Sometimes we'll be going good, sometimes not so good. But ne nevertheless, as I said, one should be persevering. Now, one of the main uh, 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 principles that uh, all devotees have to uh, embrace uh, is given by uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said two things, Hare Krishna chanting and association with devotees. These two things, so many things we can do, but these two things are very, very important. Always do the chanting and always do association with the devotees. And then other things will come. Then you'll have to, uh, you always have to uh, remain humble. Lord Chaitanya also said that, that humility for a Vaishnava, you should wear it like a necklace around your neck. Just like when the ladies put the necklace, it is always there. So humility should be worn like the necklace around the neck of the Vaishnava. It has to always be there. Humility. Always try to be in the humble. That Lord Chaitanya, Trinada peace and each and that. If you're always humble, not requiring and not desiring fame or respect or adoration, kirtan, kirtani You will always be able to do the the, the kirtan, sadahari. Always be able to chant the holy name of Hari Krishna. But if one becomes proud, then you're going to be insulting to others. You make offences then your kirtan will be inhibited. So this will affect the steadiness. So so many things to consider. Uh, and Madhurya Kanda Mini is a nice book by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur that uh, how to, uh, what are the anatas? First of all, we have to recognize what these things, what the problems are. If you don't even recognize them, they'll be like, <laughs> that's a problem. So then you have to be educated. But then, uh, uh, then okay, how to overcome? Uh, but the main thing is being steady, getting the paramadrishpa, always chanting, associating with the body feeling the ecstasy. So, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. And uh, we can uh, take some any questions if anyone uh, desires to ask any question or any comment. Yes. One question. So, you mentioned that when you are in trouble, when you are in difficulties, we need to do more chanting. So, that is really big of clarification because when we come across the difficulties, we will be focusing more time to solve those difficulties. The way you solve them is the chanting. <laughs> That's it. Other things are, uh, uh, you can do, uh, it can be adjustments. It can be adjustments. But the primary, actually, uh, um, one temple president told me many years ago, that Prabhupada told him, he said, in the, in the community, if there's problems, maybe there's fighting on... He said, he said that I would go and just go there and first thing, everyone together chanting. Doesn't matter who's there, what, what adjustment we can make. That we can talk later. But 
first thing, everyone come together, chanting, a long time chanting. Yeah, get thy consciousness away. So the way to solve it is actually more chanting. And then the detail of certain things, then you then, but the main thing is the chanting song. That because they, because things will be solved when the consciousness is raised high. When the consciousness is on the lower nature, then even the small things will become big things. Understand? Small things will become big things. There's a Western saying: you make a mountain out of the molehill. You know that saying? There's a little molehill, but you'll make the mountain from that. So if you're negative, then you'll look for things to be wrong. But if you're positive, then you'll look. So how to overcome? Oh, there's a problem. Let us fix it. But if you're negative, you'll see the problem. Nah, too much problem. Let me go away. Too, too much. You're in the negative. So how to get in the positive? Do this chanting, then you'll begin to become more positive. And then you do the chanting first. That is actually the solution. And then, then once you're in the high, then you can concentrate. Oh, what are the details? What are the actual things? And they won't seem so. And so everyone's the same. And then, then there will be a more fruitful uh, process to resolve the issues. Um, yes, any other question? Yes. How to uh, balance the non-devotees association? Not non-devotees. How to balance it. Well, uh, you yourself, now Prabhupada used to say that, okay, you have your duties in the world, and you're, you're at home, try to make the home nice atmosphere, Krishna conscious atmosphere. And then, but then you have to go to work. So then you have to associate with the non devotees But Prabhupada said that. But if you in the morning, especially before you go to the work, uh, you're doing the chanting, uh, you have the deities at home. Uh, in India, and I know in other countries, I know in Bali, I still see some, especially the older people, uh, there's generally a temple everywhere. Because they're Bali, Indonesia is mainly Muslim, but Bali is mainly Hindu. So in the morning, there's everywhere there's temple. Before I see them, I see them in the morning because I'm doing my japa walk. And I see them, they get up, and before they go to the work, they go to the temple. They're doing their prayers, they're doing everything like that. I know in India, especially in the villages, the same. So in the morning, Prabhupada said, if you're doing all the chanting and everything like that, as much as possible, although you have to go to work early, still spend some time doing the chanting. And then he said that. That will keep you in the good consciousness you know, throughout the whole day. That even though you're associating, uh, you will not uh, be so much affected by that. Is that the nature of your question? Yeah. So you will not be uh, 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 so much affected, and then uh, you'll be in, in, in a, a higher level, and then that, that will benefit from your association, rather than you'll be uh, you'll be uh, negatively affected by their association. So you'll be, in a, and they, they don't know what it is, but there will be something about you. So those who actually, uh, so even if they don't know, that they, they'll be with you, they'll get your association, and you won't be so free. So the main thing is you, you, your, your, your uh, activities uh, before you go to work, and they, these types of programs, so in the weekend, uh, you come and you get together with the devotees. At home, try to do some chanting, try to chant on the Jacka beats, do some rounds. And sometimes you can't do, if you're initiated, you can't do all your rounds. Papa used to say that, when he was working, he used to do a certain amount in the morning, then he'd get a break in the mid-morning, he'd do a couple more, and then he'd do it in the afternoon, so it's a little bit more, and then when he came up, he'd do it. So in that way, he was doing all his rounds. <laughs> he couldn't do every, all the rounds in the, in the one sitting in the morning, because he had to go to the business. Uh, so, But he used to balance it in that way. In your break, you're doing some chanting. <laughs> Then you will be definitely not so affected <laughs> during your morning break or during your lunchtime. You do some chanting. That'll be very balanced. <laughs> it's not always possible, but you know, and keep these things in mind that you can do these types of activities if, if, if you if you have that uh, opportunity. Yes. Hare Krishna, Mother. Um, how do we keep that motivation to continue chanting? Yes, because you have to have. Sometimes I go up and down. Yeah, you go up and down. You have to have a good association. Very good association. Association can be vapu, can be in person, just like we're having these programs. And you associate with other devotees, and by the collective association, your uh, your your consciousness also becomes more high. Because in the collective, the the consciousness is more high because everyone's together. So then yours comes up also. 
so you can have that association in a group in, in person, or you can have association. You have to keep association. Uh, you know, you do some reading and you read the instructions uh, of the acharyas. You're keeping association through their instructions. You see. And so uh, I remember when we were out there, uh, Prabhuji said that I was just traveling and distributing the books. I remember as a young brahmachari traveling around here in New Zealand, this area, and sometimes only two of us. And we'd be in the south. And those times there was no devotees back there anyway. We'd go to the Invercargill and all these places, very south. And we'd just be very isolated by ourselves. But we would be reading the books and, 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 and keeping the association. Just like Prabhupada said, I went to America, I was by myself. But I, I would always read Chaitanya Charamrita and uh, the instructions of my And I always felt my guru was with me. I was never alone. So you have to associate either through the uh, uh, Vapu or the Vani, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, and have good association, especially with uh, uh, more senior devotees, that's very, very helpful. So good association and good chanting, these two things, good chanting, good association, you'll become more steady. But of course, because we're beginning, we have to expect that they will dip sometimes. Uh, don't be surprised. Uh, that means you're thinking you're already very advanced devotee, and then when you dip, oh, why I dip? I'm a very special devotee. <laughs> I shouldn't be dipping. But you will dip. Because everyone dips. Because of the we're beginning. And we have the previous consciousness. And that comes sometimes again. So therefore you have to expect. And then when it comes, then you deal with that thing. Understand? Or right, now I have to do more chanting. Now I have to do, get someone's... Now I'm dipping. Let me go for the association. Let me do something. Let me eat prasadam. <laughs> you know, do anything, do all the things, and that will be very helpful. Maharaj, yes. like, it is particularly with the chanting, Maharaj. Sometimes, like, I may reduce my chanting rounds, and, but I wanted to read Bhagavad Gita, I have interest, but sometimes I wanted to listen to Bhagavatam classes, but not chanting. So it is like variety thing that you were... <laughs> because actually variety comes from the spiritual world. It's not that in the spiritual, you know, we are not the, the monists who the, we are liberated, we go to Brahman, it's just one thing, there's no variety of anything. Actually beyond that, there is the variety of the spiritual. So variety is here in this world because there is variety in the, spir in the spiritual world. So variety is good, it's not that variety is bad. But the variety in this world is also limited, that's the problem. When we go to the variety, that in itself is limited. But the variety, so we like, so variety in the Krishna consciousness is also good. Sometimes we listen to Bhagavatam, sometimes we're eating the prasadam, sometimes we're just associating with the rose, sometimes we're doing the chanting. Uh, so we can do all these things, and any of these things. Uh, it's encouraged, yes, you do all of these things. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, uh, Sevanam, Parasevanam. Shmara the Muli, the recommended processes for advancing. So yes, variety, seeking variety in spiritual life is good. As uh, long as we don't go to the variety of the material world. <laughs> but stay in the variety of the spiritual world, that's very good. And, and the Acharyas have given so many different ways you can serve the Lord. Uh, and do your, you do your uh, own advancement. And but good, seek the variety. Uh, and it's encouraged. Because we were seeking variety before, so if we don't have variety, and that's the problem with the impersonalists. They, they get liberated, they taste the Brahman, but because they uh, internally, their nature is variety. Uh, that, that's, so they seek it again. Sometimes they come back to the material. So, yes, variety is good. So sometimes you like to do Bhagavatam, that's all right. Uh, sometimes you like to do chanting, that's all right. But as long as you don't neglect every day to do the chanting and the Bhagavatam, <laughs> you know. One, at one point in the day you want to do Bhagavatam, that's good. Other point you do <laughs> chanting. But make sure you do all, all the things. Thank you. Mother. Yes. Thank you so much for your lecture, Maharaj. I have a question, Maharaj, that is it's going in my mind like, for like some ages that I want to ask. And now you're for here. ages. <laughs> yeah, you're here, so I thought that why not? This is the right time. So, Maharaj, uh, so far my understanding towards the lectures that I have in because I'm not actually the, the one to say that I'm following Krishna consciousness from you know from a long, long time. It's been like a couple of years only that I've entered into this. 
So my question is that um, it's it's mentioned in every lecture that we do chanting because we want to connect with Krishna. And Krishna because is Because we want to do something, Krishna? We want to connect, connect, with, Krishna. connect with Krishna. Yeah, we want to connect with Krishna and we don't want to take birth again. That's why we don't want we want to leave this materialistic, you know, uh, item for everything and we just want the Krishna consciousness in the mind. But the thing is that the people who doesn't know about Krishna, who know nothing about Krishna, they have no knowledge about Bhagavad Gita, but they are actually following their Lord, maybe Jesus Christ or whatsoever, and they are doing pretty good job in their life. They, they don't do any sin, they don't perform any bad habits. They are rightly doing what is we are supposed to do if we don't want to birth again. So those people need to come back in this world because they are not following Krishna or they won't come back because whatever they are doing, they are on the right side right now. Well, now, Prabhupada, in case, someone is very attached to following Jesus Christ. And so, Prabhupada say, let them follow. But once you follow, actually, you're not in, in the name of following. See, the problem is that many people, not only the Christians, but even in the Hindus, they say, I'm the Hindu, but they're not following very well. Uh, I'm the Hindu, I'm, I'm knowing these things. Sometimes someone says to me, why India, we are the Hindus, we know all these things, why are there so many problems? I said, the problem is because you're not actually following. Yes. So yes. someone who actually wants to follow Jesus Christ, Prophet would encourage you to follow him. He gave the good uh, teachings, and uh, those who are perfected in following, and then they will go to be uh, with Jesus. And Jesus is in the exalted position, Prophet told him, he is there in the highest planet of the material and the Brahma will come. He is very exalted. They will go to be with Jesus there. But if you want to go to the topmost level, so in, in our uh, Gauriya uh, Vaishnav Sampradaya, Lord Chaitanya is giving us a position of, of, of Radha and Krishna uh, divine love, which is, the, is, is considered the topmost position. So someone may follow, uh, um, you know, the Christianity. So they'll be elevated to a certain level. They'll go there. And others will go, some of them, they're worshipping the devas. They'll go to the devas. They'll get, go, go to the heaven. You see. But if you want to go uh, to Krishna and, and, and to elevate it to that love of uh, the divine love that is the experience in the topmost level, that intensity, then follow uh, the process given by Lord Chaitanya. So, no, we don't discourage uh, someone who wants to follow. Uh, just that we, we encourage them to follow as best as possible. So we see some of the people they are following, and they're, uh, but unfortunately, in the name of now, they are eating the meat and all this stuff. I've I met some Christians who are vegetarians, and uh, they are actually, uh, you know, following Jesus quite nicely. Uh, but uh, so they will have to get some reaction for uh, uh, killing the animals and eating the meat. But if someone is actually following, they can be very much elevated to the level of Jesus Christ, who, is, uh, who Prophet said he is the best son of God. You know, so he's very exalted. So I, I went with Prabhupada in quite a few places. He would speak at the, uh, in the, 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 uh, the uh, Christian seminaries. He would speak to different leaders of the Catholic and all that. And he would very much uh, encourage them to continue on their path. You understand? But for us, we want to go to Krishna. And that is considered a very exalted position. So we follow our path. They're following their path. So don't disturb them. And just encourage them to uh, follow as best as possible. But Tanan, what about, uh, like, in our community, like my parents, take for example, <laughs> I mean, we are from the family where we do worship of Mata Rami, you know, and we do worship of Shri Bhagavan. I mean, we do worship for Krishna as well, but the main source for us is Mata. So if I say to my family, okay, you do worship of Krishna and just, you know, put them as a behind, so they definitely ask me this question that why only Krishna, you know, because every god is similar, you know, that's what I... Well, that's, you see, that's a misunderstanding from yeah. their part. Yeah. Yeah. See, you have to understand, they're all different levels uh, uh, of, of, of what, what is the position of someone. Uh, Krishna, Stu, Bhagavan, so on. There's many statements in the Shastra that from Krishna all things emanate. All incarnations come, uh, all, all, all uh, incarnations and all the devas come. Uh, so uh, one can worship, uh, uh, if you worship the devas, but Krishna says we're right in Bhagavad Gita. If you worship the devas, you go to be with the devas. Uh, but, uh, but, but the heaven is in this world. I remember here in Auckland, Prabhupada, in the, in the Gandhi Hall, Prabhupada gave a look at that. 
one Hindu gentleman, he said, Swami, in our religion we have many gods, but what do you say about that? He said, oh, they are of this world. He said, I'm talking to someone beyond the world. <laughs> Very simple answer. They said, they are of this world. You can go to their position. But if you want to go beyond the world, to the top one, you would push a Christian. So that up to them. We can't force. Your parents want to follow them? Fine. But if you want to go to the topmost, then the only way to go to the topmost, you follow Krishna. Krishna will take you there. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, if we have a close friends or uh, family members who are like, we know that they're following impersonalist philosophy, do we try to convince them or uh, do we just leave, leave them as they are? Is that uh, 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 a close friends or family close members? Close friends. Yeah, if they are. Yeah. No, I mean, you try to you know, introduce Christians, but you can't force them. You have to be very careful. The art of how to encourage someone is something to be learned. And we see, and you learn that from the more, more, more experienced advanced devotees <laughs> and how Prabhupada did it and how advanced devotees do it. So you <laughs> learn the art of how to present the Krishna conscious in such a way that it is not going to uh, cause them to. Uh, um, go away from the Krishna God. So sometimes someone can present too forcefully and that makes them go away. So it is a great art in how to present it. And you have to learn that up from the advanced devotees. Uh, so, but uh, the, the mood is to try to help everyone. Not that just leave them. Try to help them. But some people, uh, some people don't want to be helped. So you, you, you don't disturb them. They don't want anything. Then you go to some other one. And just like Prabhupada said that uh, he, the, he had some devotees in Iran, and, and uh, they gave some report. Here in Iran, at that time there was a war going on between Iran and Iraq. And they said, here, Prabhupada, and then, of course, Muslim country also. But anyway, some uh, devotees went there. And, uh, they said, there are some people interested, Prabhupada, but ma mainly because there's war. People are very angry, and uh, it's very hard to present anything to them. They're so caught up in the whole thing. And Papa said, yes, when people are very angry, it's very difficult. So, as preachers, we, we can go to, if it's not, one place is not so conducive, you go to the other place. And maybe later on you can see about this place again. Not that we just go, go, go and try to force it. He said that, yes, maybe the, now they're, they're, the situation is not very favorable. They're too angry. Someone is too angry or whatever their situation. Uh, all right, so you go to someone else. So don't be attached to the result of the thing. You just do your duty and try to help the people. It's up to them whether they want to take it. And you have to learn the art how to present it nicely. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, you have spent uh, almost like 48 years in Krishna consciousness. So I'm sure there, there would have been lots of ups and downs uh, in its own around. around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, I haven't what, finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your personal tips to remain uh, steady in Krishna consciousness when. Uh, that, that, that's exactly what I said. The chanting. Chanting is very, very important association. These two things. I, mean, you know, I, I knew that instruction from Lord Chaitanya many decades. And, but, and now I'm realizing more and more how true that is. Before you just hear it, intellectualize it, and you know, and you say, yes, yeah, simple, but. Now I'm just feeling the weight of that instruction because you know, trying so many other things, actually, the best is what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <laughs> said, just do these things. You know, sometimes uh, uh, you think you have to do so many other things, but I remember one time in Adelaide, uh, one lady said, in, uh, for your meditation, what, what, do you, what do you do? I said, we chant, we chant Hare Krishna. And what else do you do? We chant more. <laughs> <laughs> I said, those, those who have the faith in the chanting, that is sufficient. That is perfection. You don't need other things. If you don't have the faith, then you have to look for the other thing. I remember a really, a Prabhupada, in the early days, he went to the San Francisco and there was one uh, uh, commune uh, ranch. And uh, this Lou Gottlieb, Mr. Mr. Lou Gottlieb, he owned that. And he wanted Prabhupada to come for a program there. Mr. Lou Gottlieb, he was into the yoga and so many different paths. On the way he was driving Prabhupada and he was talking. 
about so many different things. So Bob I let him talk for a while. Then at some point he said, he said, Mr. Lou, he said, Mr. Lou, he said, he said, when you have attained the perfection, then other things are also superfluous. No need for so many other things. Try a little bit this one, a little bit that one, a little bit the other one. I've tried this and I've tried that. He said, when you've actually got the perfection, what is the need for trying other things? Because if you're very satisfied, one thing you don't want anything else. That is the... So he said, we have the Krishna consciousness. We are just satisfied with that thing. So he understood. He said, we, we just do the chanting. Others may not have faith. They, they let them do the other things. But for us, we just do chanting. Okay, so thank you very much. One last question. Uh, Harishwa, thank you very much. Yes. There's some very good points in the lecture that I know that I can personally apply. Mm -hmm. um, at work, um, I have colleagues in Australia who I've not met personally, but uh, over video conferences and things like that, we've spoken. Mm -hmm. And they understand that because we're part of the Christian Conscious Movement, um, that we do meditation and things like that. So there's a question that uh, a colleague has said, now on Monday I want to speak to you about meditation. Mm -hmm. Now on Monday when she asks me about yeah. that, so how much or how little should I explain about the form of meditation you do and you know, the mantra meditation and things like that? Is there any... Well you have to explain we do the mantra meditation. You know, they, they may be thinking of some other, like this Astanga Yoga type mm -hmm. of thing, so, you know, like sitting silently and uh, you know. People when, generally these days, the popular, you sit silently they have all sorts of methods they have there, you know, you, you meditate on this thing or you meditate on nothingness, you just sit silently, or they have some sort of uh, uh, alpha wave music going in the back, you know. And now now I, I read that they, they have there, some people are advocating you put some new high technology thing around your neck, <laughs> making you very peaceful and then you can do the meditation. So you just wear this thing. Like that, and it gives some vibration or something. <laughs> that vibration makes you very calm, and then you can do the meditation. But for us, you say, we do mantra meditation. Mantra meditation, and it, quite a lot of our programs, they advertise mantra meditation. So we do the mantra meditation, and uh, we chant uh, various things like that. So you, know, you can explain from the mantra point of view. She, she will understand mantra, that's quite popular. They like to chant so many different mantras. Generally, they like to chant very slowly or <laughs> They can chant Hare Krishna slowly or something. <laughs> and generally, when we do those types of programs with the yoga type of people, we, we, we don't have, like, Iskon style is more fast, you know. We like to dance and everything. But uh, generally, those people, they, so therefore, you know, you'll find that the, the Kirtanias who go around and do those types of programs, generally they do very slow Kirtan. They don't do jumping and walk birds. <laughs> that's, that's us, we feel great ecstasy, so we jump in. But for the people, they're expecting something different and they may be in shock. Peter <laughs> 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 Prabhupada was very, you know, one time in, in Delhi, Tejas was telling me that he did a Pandal program. Prabhupada came back to the temple and he said, what did you think of the kirtan today, what the devotees were doing? And some of them said, oh, very nice Prabhupada. He said, Prophet said, no, it wasn't so good. He said, too much banging and clanging. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't hear the chanting. He said, banging on the gong. Banging on the gong. He said, oh, and then he said, I will show you how to do the chanting. And he said, just very one cartel, not even in Madanga. One cartel, very slowly. He said, this is how you do it. You do like this. Not immediately, you start after one second, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I find like that. After one second, immediately you have to go fast. Copper actually taught us you do it in waves. He said, the kirtan's way. Starting slowly, you build up, and then you come down, and then you come to the end. Like that. But anyway, they're going back to the yoga presentation, and then you have to do more uh, uh, calm, calmly type of chanting. Just very quietly and, and, and slowly. And then they appreciate that. That's what they're looking for in the beginning. And then later on, when they do more chanting, they want to dance. More. <laughs> but in the beginning, present present like that. That's the best. We, all the devotees who do that type of preaching, they always do like that. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Nice to uh, have your association. Hare Krishna. What is the program name? DJ. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. That was a wonderful lecture, and there are lots of uh, tips that we have received for staying and remaining steady in our Krishna consciousness.
So I hope uh, everyone has uh, taken some notes and they will start try start following uh, all these uh, points that Maharaj has mentioned. <coughs> so now um, we have some uh, Prashadam Maharaj from Urupi. Uh, Urupi Krishna, we had recently visited. But before you, you uh, if I can just say, I want to get a photo with everyone. I like Krishna. 